Yo, my people, welcome to Behind the Hits, hosted by Mixtape Madness with myself, Ebbs. In this series, we're going to be showcasing the growth and evolution of production in the UK rap music scene over the years. This episode will feature the South London beatmaker behind the first UK drill single to go number one with Tion Wayne and Ross's body, as well as working with the likes of V9, Jack Harlow, Unknown T, Abracadabra, Quangface, RD, and many more. Multi platinum producer, Gotcha. Gotcha. Yep. How you doing? Yeah, I'm, I'm tired. Uh, do you know what? Same. <laughs> Talk to me, man. What's up? What's going on in the life of Gotcha right now? What's, what's the latest? Uh, it's been a good year, you know. Had body come out, a whole load of remixes. Platinum, number one. When it came out, yeah. TNRD. Life's good, man. I can't even complain. Yeah. Life's good right now. For those at home and watching on the mm-hmm. go, whatever. Walk us through, like, the upbringing of Gotcha from... The eight, like five, six year old to like getting into secondary. Just walk mm. us through the upbringing, what, what the, the household was like, siblings, what, what's going on, man? Grew up in my household, me, my mum, my older brother. Growing up, I will lie, I can't lie, I was a little shit. Is it? Yeah, <laughs> like, I always knew I kind of had like a passion for music, but didn't really try to pursue it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's kind of just a thing where, because it's my passion, I kind of just do it. Oh, okay. The same way some people know they can draw, yeah, yeah, yeah. but they just don't pursue it as a career. They just do it because they just enjoy it sort of thing. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, I mean, growing up, a lot of my family were very high musically orientated. Sort of okay, thing. yeah, So yeah. Kitchen, mum's playing all the old school bangers, lovers rock, soul, jazz. You you name it, she was playing it. Um, what about, have you got any siblings? Yeah, I've got one older brother still. Oh, okay, what was it like... Um... Outside of your mum, what was what was anything being played like? You know, when you was growing up, what was being Mainly played by just him? Like hip hop rap. Okay, okay. Like the Biggie Smalls, yeah. Uncle Murders. Just like a, a large variety of just a lot, whole lot of hip hop going yeah, on. Yeah. So it was like a contrast of very heavy rap. Okay. In my brother's room, yeah, then you yeah. go down to the kitchen because that's my mum's. It's a sanctuary. Yeah. You know what I'm <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel like for a lot of mums, it's just like it's their place of comfort. Like you make food there with the love. <laughs> You have, a, you have a glass of wine with love. Yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, so it was, a, it was a thing like that where it's just a whole lot of rhythms going on, just early morning sort of settings, isn't it? Obviously, you had your influences growing up. You said your mum was playing her music, brother would play a brother, like all the hip hop mm-hmm. and all that. Um, what would you say, producer wise, were your influences? Because obviously, with your age, mm-hmm. um, usually it's we've got the artist influences, so you can answer your artists as well. Mm-hmm. But were there any producers early on before you started? meeting some of your peers and seeing the game right now. Were there any producers yeah. back then as well? Uh, there were quite a few. There was Jalil Beats, if you know who oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So he done a lot of Meat Mill stuff back in the days. Yeah. Sax Beats. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Gotti, MK, Mazza, LA Beats. Like, especially when it came to UK drill. Yeah, like, yeah, Those yeah. were a lot of influences for me that kind of just made me feel like, raw. these lot do it differently compared oh, okay. to like the very traditional way of yeah, doing yeah, drill yeah. sort of thing, innit? You fast forward in your, in your career, what moment was it where you're, it was like, cool, this this producing thing can pay, I can live off this, it can mm. support me, I can support my family, my loved ones. What was that turnaround moment in your career like? Uh, I think it, well, what time was it? I think it was either after Gun Lean dropped or Keisha okay. and Becky, the original dropped, yeah, not yeah. the remix. Yeah. I just had people in my emails just like, yo, we should go for coffee. Oh. <laughs> I'm like 18, I'm like... Who drinks coffee during midday yeah. for no reason? Just have a conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was like a very different turning point for me. Yeah. So how did you deal with that in a sense? Because that means obviously things are popping off and things are a lot more successful. Mm-hmm. It might must have been hard at this point. I'm assuming there's no management. There's mm-hmm. no, do you know what I mean? How yeah, did yeah. you, what was all that like for you? It was just very different at first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like most times, who normally, like most of them times there, it was normally like direct message. Yeah. Nothing to do with emails. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, every time I get an email, you know it's serious. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just seeing, like, a bunch of emails, it was, like, very overwhelming. Yeah, I ended up getting in contact with my Today management. And, uh, yeah, I basically just had, like, a conversation with them to, like, get, like, a, a better grip and understanding yeah. of, like, what does this mean? Like, yeah, not, not the deeper end of, like, yeah. contracts, what they're offering. Just, like, what does it mean? Like, yeah. Then once there, we like, what does coffee mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got my managers. I love my managers because yeah. they do their job and they do it well sort of thing. Yeah. So it's like, they handle some of the business side. Yeah. I handle <laughs> the music side. You yeah, know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, I just want to keep my passion, my passion. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, no, it gets 100. a little bit complicated when it's like, you got people saying like, yo, what's your price? Then your, your yeah, brain is just like yeah, yeah. caught in a moment. So you just say like a dumb number. Yeah, How much yeah, do you yeah. want for the beat? Uh, 
two wings and chips. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. You got me under pressure right now. Learn the fact that don't accept two wings and chips. <laughs> 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 you're now able to enjoy the creation of music that mm-hmm. you make talk me through the mind of gotcha like in the studio or like when he's in the bedroom making the beats like what's the mindset of gotcha so gotcha gets the laptop sits down walk me through like what goes through your head is it, is it any vibe that comes is there a strat- is you got a process that you always work by yeah, every process is normally different isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah i think it more depends on like what i was doing before i made the beat yeah if i like watch like youtube videos and like because YouTube is like very high, well, around the time it was like yeah. very highly, it was still today, but the suggestions were like based off of like what you loosely watch. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like if I get a few suggestions or I'm on Spotify listening to some music and it's like something new will just pop up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I find like a new playlist. Okay. Go through it. Like I, I rarely try to listen to music. I listen to like the same playlist over and over and over okay. again. So okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just so I don't get too trapped into like making a lot of the same stuff over and over yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. So when I do eventually find it, it feels more genuine compared to, God, let's go, let's a new song come out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it's like, you're, yeah, it, it takes you out of that. Uh, it, it somewhat takes you out of that passion thing. It's like, it's not, it's becoming slightly a chore and a job. Mm-hmm. Even though obviously it's a job, but I know, you know, like it yeah. becomes less fun when you. I don't, don't want to make like it like that where it's just like, oh, I've got to find out what's the new source, what's really going on. Yeah, of yeah. course you do, but I like to just make sure it's genuine. Yeah, thing, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? yeah. Authentic's always best, man. Now, if we're talking the evolution of sound today, now we fast forwarded, we're talking <coughs> about the sound today. Mm-hmm. With everything that's coming out, you've got um, your drill, your rap, but now there's a tree, there's like sub-genres. Mm-hmm. So you have, I don't know, your Afro drill, you've got even people going R and drill. Mm-hmm. Um, different types of wave sounds trying to be made. What do you think about the sounds of the UK today, like, and where it's heading? What's your What's your opinions on all of that? Like, Personally, I just feel like whatever really comes out and it's popping, a yeah. lot of people just try to take it and run with it. Yeah. Obviously... I feel like it happens everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Because of course you've got like America, UK, the, yeah. the Europe are kind of just following contrast, yeah, yeah, yeah. like downwards. You know what I'm saying? Like oh, America, okay, yeah, yeah. then the UK catch on, yeah. then a lot of Europe will catch on, yeah. and then like three years later, Africa will catch on, sort of thing. You get know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Does that? Do you think that's that's bad? Even though we know that's a regular thing and that happens a lot, do you think that's really bad for for things like it stops people from actually being creative because it becomes a thing where a lot of artists have beats and sounds they want mm-hmm. producers want to make different things but they can't because that's everyone's demanding this one popping thing yeah. like would you say that's bad for the scene in a sense um i guess it's got its pros in it but it's like eventually just everybody starts to sound the same on the yeah, same beat yeah. you get what i'm saying where people catch on to a certain flow yeah or people catch on to like a certain type of beat and a certain bpm a certain yeah. sound sort of thing it's like eventually everybody just starts to sound somewhat the same so yeah. then it limits people who actually have like authentic genuine ways of being creative yeah, yeah. compared to just yeah someone added a, a moog bass on oh, drill yeah, yeah, and yeah. now everybody's going to start using moog bass sort yeah. of thing isn't it? as far as gotcha goes and like collaborations and working with gotcha how do you find collaborations do you find yourself working with the same people in person all the time do you, do you branch out sometimes that we don't know about talk to me about collaborations and gotcha uh mainly i just work with like my very like compact circle yeah, yeah. is that what probably makes it easier and i feel like do you accept that like, you know i see sometimes some producers like they will ask out like oh loops this that do mm. you still do that sometimes or is it no. always that like, you have your that group no. if you ever i don't like, i don't accept loops Oh, okay. Like, I make my own loops. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's yeah. like, a lot of people try to send me a lot of stuff I can yeah. make. And people just send me unnecessary stuff anyway. Oh, You know what I'm okay, saying? Like, yeah, here's some Gunner yeah. loops. Do I work with Gunner? <laughs> Do I know Gunner? You know what I'm saying? They just said trap loops. They should just said trap loops. Yeah, but it's yeah. like, it's so vivid, like Drake loops. Yeah, It's yeah. like that one uncle, like, you should work with Drake. <laughs> Do I know Drake? How am I going to get in contact with Drake? Drake? To get this place for <laughs> Drake? Drake? Because you say you make your own loops. Mm. I'm not going to, I wouldn't know if everybody in that group makes their own loops. Like, what do you find yourself doing the most, most times? Like, Yeah, most times the loops. Is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's like, most times man would be like, yo, like, any man got loops? Anybody trying to cook up sort of thing? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Every man's got their, their laptop out. Yeah, yeah. But most times I'm just like, well, if I'm in the studio, I'll be real. Sometimes I'm sipping a Maggie, maybe two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm feeling myself. I'm, I'm overly gassed. So I'm like, yo, yeah. let me show them the performance. Again, yeah, let me yeah, show yeah, what yeah, I yeah. can do under this pressure <laughs> right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, most times I'll just make the loops, start it off, maybe add like a... Most of it, like, recently, I've just made like the loop or I've already got the loop there. Yeah. Added like an 808, just like one 808, just so there's 
you know, my own version of something, you know, yeah, apart yeah, from yeah. just the loop, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. I still want to add something to the beat. Yeah, of course. Man. And then obviously other people come along, add their, their little pieces here and there. Yeah. Then eventually, I feel like every producer at one point of time tries to create, like, put their own little insanity into a beat. Oh, okay. Like, I feel like the first 40 seconds of a beat yeah. is where the artist listens to it and he goes, you know what? Yeah, this is hard. Like, there's not too yeah. much going on. It's not too simple. Yeah, yeah, but it's yeah, not yeah. too much. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. After that 40, 50 seconds, yeah. you can do your own little insanity. You yeah, can yeah, add, yeah, like, yeah, eight-way yeah. slides and octave 10 if you want to. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Obviously, again, you can't really answer this, but it's nice to just know your thoughts. What would you like to see going forward, like, let's say this year, in terms of the sounds that kind of come to the forefront? And what do you think your role could be in that if you're, you know, with your answer. UK trap, I feel like it's highly slept on, not many people really give yeah. two shits. Yeah. And a lot more of the R and B. Is it? Yeah. There's a lot like, out there, you know. No, of course there yeah. is, but I feel like it's still highly slept on compared yeah. to like what R and B used to be. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like you would have R and B songs that would go double platinum. Yeah. They'll do big things compared to nowadays and it's just like I feel like they're slept on very heavily. Yeah. Being where you are, there's gonna be a lot of people that of course look up to you and mm -hmm. wanna achieve similar things, some other things and whatever. <laughs> what one piece of advice it can be funny, goof, whatever, that you would actually give to any upcoming producer, like one thing you wish you could have either heard or one thing you feel like they need to hear just um, coming into the game or whilst they're in the game. Got man under pressure with all these free you cameras got in time. my face as well, you got, man. You got, time, you got time, man. Um, make sure you're actually doing what you love. Like, if it's just for the love of money or for a little bit of fame, a bit of clout, dead that, man. Go do a level one foundation bricklayer, and I don't know. Just do mm. something else, innit? If I'm being honest with you. Like, if you're going to do it, actually love what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? So you actually have the passion, the drive to potentially go to, like, two sessions in a day. Because some people, because they don't have the passion, the love for it, it's just a thing where it's like, there's a session today, I might not even roll, you know? Yeah. Like, it's not really that deep. I might get paid, yeah. but like, make it more about the passion for what you love and love what you do, of course, innit? Yeah. And at the same time, also be very authentic. Like, don't just be messaging hella, like, hella producers, just like, yeah, let's work, let's work, let's work, let's work, let's work. Just make sure it's genuine a lot of the times. Like, make sure you actually vibe with this person, because if not, you're just going to be collaborating with people you don't like. And of course, every person within the music industry has their reasons for what they do. Yeah, yeah, some yeah. people are made, like quite selfish. Some yeah. people are quite selfless. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like trying to put everybody on like, yo, we're all still small, but if we work together, get the networks and the links together, the we can make this happen sort yeah. of thing. Compared to, yeah, I'm going to work on my man because popping right now. You yeah. get that one big song, and then a year later, you're dry. Yeah. You're dry nyash. We don't, we don't like that. We don't like that. We can all win in this. We can all win. Everybody can eat. There you go, man. You heard it there first, but gotcha regarding your creation process and the tools you've been using recently. Like, what have they been and how have they been working out for you? Well, as far as DAW was, everybody knows what I use. If you know, you know. Come on. Yeah, if yeah. you're not using it, <laughs> you're losing out. Uh, a lot of the process recently has just been like, loop there on the spot if i've already got a loop there if not i make the melody on the spot improvise try it over and over again until i get it right sort of thing yeah. if i don't i sleep on it get back to it tomorrow but if i get it right then we move on to the eight weights you know just just go do your thing like whatever comes to your brain whatever you hear in the yeah. moment you just do it sort of thing you just implement it so not everybody has that sort of gift yeah, but yeah. i get i get that still so um after that we move on to the bounce the perks the hi-hats the snares and then the kicks, which for me have to be punchy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So then, um, yeah, after that, we just mix it all down. But a lot of the time recently, I've been using a lot of innovation stuff. Can't lie, I'm a big fan, you know? You can sample in this. So I could yeah, yeah. process something into here, 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 and here. Okay. And then get it in the notes. Bang, 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 bang. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could yeah. even do a velocity change. My laptop's even mad right now, but yeah, you get what yeah, I'm saying. Hard, yeah, I hear it. You man. get the patterns rolling. You can, you can do everything on this thing. You're not understanding yeah, 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 me right yeah. now. But yeah. <laughs> and there we have it. That was Behind the Hits. And I just chopped up with Gotcha. Hosted by Mixtape Madness and myself. Uh, sponsored by Novation. And till next time. <laughs>